Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to extend what we did in the first video, where we used sim mechanics to look at a brick that was vibrating on a horizontal surface. And in particular what we're going to do is investigate two different configurations, one where it's hanging from the ceiling and vibrating, and one where it's lying on an inclined plane and vibrating. And again, we're going to use sim mechanics. But before we go to sim mechanics, we're going to explore this a little bit doing some hand calculations. And the reason for that is that we want to come up with some initial conditions of the brick so that when we start the simulation at those initial conditions, it does nothing. Now that sounds kind of boring, but it's actually very important. Because if we can do that, we can convince ourselves that we know exactly what the simulation should do and that it does it, and then it gives us confidence that when we either extend the spring or contract the spring and let it vibrate that the simulation is probably correct. The interesting thing about these two configurations is to achieve them all we have to do is change the rotation angle of that rigid transform block that we used to rotate the prismatic joint. So first let's review what we did in the first video where we had a mass vibrating on a horizontal surface. So we had a mass and a spring K with a damping C on a nice rigid horizontal surface. And recall that we had a couple frames. We had a world frame where the Z axis was up and the X axis was to the right. And it's denoted in sim mechanics as W, but I changed the name of it to frame zero. And then we rotated the prismatic joint by 90 degrees about the positive y axis of the world frame. So that put the prismatic joint, which by default rotates, or I'm sorry, translates in the z direction along the horizontal surface. And so there's our frame one. So now what we're going to do is come up with a hanging mass example. So instead of rotating 90 degrees about the positive y-axis, we're going to rotate that prismatic joint 180 degrees about the positive y-axis. And that will put z down and it'll place x to the left, just like this. And this is our frame 1 for the hanging mass example. And here's what it will look like. The next thing we need to do is to calculate the static equilibrium position of that hanging mass. Of course, it's not going to be at the unstretched spring length, which as you recall in the first video, we set to 10 centimeters. It's gonna be pulled down a little bit from that. So to do that, we're gonna introduce some new notation. So the distance from the ceiling to the mass at any given time, we'll just call that z. And the distance from the ceiling down to the unstretched length, which as you remember was 10 centimeters for video number one, we'll just call that z relaxed or zr. When it's in static equilibrium, we'll call that z static equilibrium or z subscript se. And finally, the distance or the amount that the spring actually stretches is that from the relaxed configuration down to static equilibrium. And we'll just call that Zs. And from looking at this figure, we can see that Z static equilibrium is just equal to Z relaxed plus Z stretch. And so we'll want to keep track of that little equation because that's what we ultimately want to calculate and be able to plug into the sim mechanics simulation. Well, let's create a free body diagram of this. So we grab hold of that brick, extract it from the system, and apply the forces to it that it will experience. So we have a spring force, K times Z stretch. Nothing from the damper, because in static equilibrium, it's not moving. And then we have gravity, Mg, pulling it down. And so we can sum up these external forces, and I'll just the spring force on one side and mg on the other, and solve for the stretch in the spring. And it's this beautiful, simple expression of mg over k.
So to use this in sim mechanics, we actually have to calculate the numerical value of Z stretch using the values that we used in video number one. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, we had a mass of 0.15 kilograms. We had a spring constant of 20 newtons per meter. And we used a rather simplistic expression for gravity. It's just 10 meters per second squared. And so now let's just calculate Z stretch. Now before I just stick in 20 newtons per meter, let's go ahead and convert newtons into more fundamental units so that we can look at this expression and make sure that what we get out of it is what we expect. And that is Z stretch in meters. So newtons per meter is kilogram meter per second squared. And then we also have to divide through by another meter. And so we get uh, kilograms per second squared. And now you can just eyeball this expression for Z stretch and see that indeed we get exactly what we want. We get meters. And in particular, let's see when we do all this, we get 0 0.075 meters or 7.5 centimeters. So now let's calculate what Z uh, static equilibrium is. Uh, Z relaxed was 10 centimeters from the first video. And uh, so we add 7.5 and obviously we get 17.5 centimeters. And that's the number that we'll want to stick into the sim mechanics model. Well, now let's go to the inclined plane example. And the inclined plane will be at angle theta. And we'll, we'll use the theta equal 30 degrees to make our life a little bit simpler for some of the calculations. And just as a reminder, so let's see, z static equilibrium is equal to z relaxed plus z stretch. And now let's do our free body diagram. So we have the spring force acting up along the direction of the inclined plane. And we have mg just acting straight down. So we have to do a wee bit of trigger in order to sort this one out, but it's not too bad. So our inclined plane of theta is right here. So we can look at this and see that if we resolve mg along the inclined plane, we'll get a term that looks like mg sine theta. So let's add the forces up along the direction of the inclined plane. And we get this. And we can just solve for this z stretch. And when we plug in theta, we just get this beautiful expression, just one half of the stretch that we had in the previous hanging mass example. And so we get 0 0.0375 meters or 3.57 centimeters. And so our static equilibrium position is just 13.75 centimeters. So when we stick this into the sim mechanics example, it should just do nothing. Again, very satisfying because then we can stretch or contract the spring and make it vibrate like mad. Now what we haven't done yet is determine how much we should rotate the rigid transform to get the prismatic joint aligned in the direction we want, which is along this inclined plane. So here's our world frame, or our frame zero, with z up. And we need to rotate that about the positive y-axis so that z is aligned along the inclined plane. So if we look at that, we can see we need to rotate it 90 plus 30, or 120 degrees. And so here's what frame one will look like once we apply the correct rigid transform rotation. Great. So we have our two examples set up. We know exactly what we should set the static equilibrium values to. Now let's go to sim mechanics and play around with this model. Okay, so here's our Simulink window. And we'll just open the example that we had from video number one.
which is right here. And there it is. Now, you know, I had one mistake in that uh, video number one, and that is the scope I labeled as centimeters, when really the output of that prismatic joint is meters. And so to clean that up a little bit, let's put in a unit conversion block. So I'll go into the Simulink browser, grab a gain block, and use that for my unit converter. So I just left click, drag it over, drop it in here. We'll go ahead and name that meters to centimeters or M to CM. And I'll need to put into that gain block a value of 100. There we go. And now I can just drag it down here, drop it, and it'll auto connect. And now everything is nicely done. Now, in video number one, I did a whole lot of black block annotation stuff. And so let's do that for this mechanism configuration block. You know, the gravity vector is buried in there. It's nice to be able to see that on the front face of the model. So we'll just go into here, right click on the block, go to block annotation, grab a couple tokens. From the gravity vector. If there's one thing I usually make a mistake on in these sim mechanics models, it's having the wrong direction for gravity. So it's nice to be able to see that on the front face. A little custom annotation with G equals. And there it is. You can stretch this out or just hit the space bar and it'll shrink it to the current view. Great. So now we have some nice, nice things in our model. Well, let's see here. Let's update the diagram, which will bring up the Mechanics Explorer. There's our brick in a side view. Change it to isometric. Wonderful. And let's turn on the axes. Our little red, blue, green axes. And go to the Pan tool. And we can shrink this down a little bit and scoot it up. And what we want to do here is just make sure that the simulation runs like it did in video number one. It's always a good starting point, kind of a clean spot to make sure it vibrates along that horizontal surface just like we think it should. Here's our scope, nicely done in meters, or centimeters, <laughs> sorry. And we can run the model from the Mechanics Explorer here. It's actually running the simulation and the animation at the same time, and it vibrates around wildly. That's because the initial position of the block is at 5 centimeters, and the unstretched spring length is 10 centimeters, so of course it, it wiggles around a bit. That's a 5 second run. Let's, uh, let's boost that up to 10 seconds, just so that we can see it damp out a little bit more. So if I stretch this out, that'll expose the little gear here, the configuration parameters icon. Click on that, set this to 10. Great. Shrink this back down. And we, let's run it again. There it is. Good stuff. Well, let's turn this into a hanging mass example. So we'll name it about hanging vibrating mass since that's pretty much what it is. And to turn it into a hanging mass from the ceiling, all we have to do is change the rigid transformation rotation angle to, to 180 degrees instead of 90. And let's update the diagram. Now let's make the notation just a little bit more consistent uh, for or with the uh, hand calculations that we did. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just change the initial position of the block to 10 centimeters. So we're, we'll set it to the same value of the unstretched spring. That way when we simulate it, we know it should vibrate a little bit. And let's go into our block annotation here in the prismatic joint. So we'll right click, go down to properties, go into block annotation, and instead of equilibrium, or EQ, let's change that to uh, ZR. That is the relaxed length of the spring. That's what we used in the, in the hand calculations. And for the 
uh, initial distance or the initial position of the block, let's set that to Z0. It'd be tempting to set that to ZSE, static equilibrium, like we'd had in the hand calculations, but that wouldn't be generally correct because sometimes we'll start the block at the static equilibrium configuration and sometimes we won't. So we'll just label that as Z0. Okay, so everything is now very nice in that block, in that model. Update the diagram. Here it is at 10 centimeters. shrink it down and scoot it over so that hopefully we can see it vibrate and we'll run it here and there it goes no surprise that it's vibrating the initial position was 10 centimeters and we know that's not the static equilibrium case that we calculated by hand oh and look at this you know we can actually cheat and see our static equilibrium configuration just by looking at that trace that it should be 17.5 centimeters, which is exactly what we calculated by hand. So let's go ahead and plug that into here. So 17.5 centimeters. And run it. And we know it should do absolutely nothing. And that's exactly what we get. So that gives me some confidence that what we did by hand and that what we have here in the simulation are consistent. It's always good to have a check of your sim mechanics model or any kind of simulation before you start thinking that it's of any use. Well, now let's just do one last run to stretch it out a little bit. It's as if we grab that mass with our hand, pull it down a centimeter, and then let it go. Here's the updated diagram, and there's the simulation. Okay, now let's turn this into an inclined plane example. We'll save it off with a different name. How about inclined vibrating mass? That's pretty, pretty original. And the cool thing about this is that to change this from a hanging mass to an inclined plane example, all we have to do is go into the rigid transform block and switch the 180 degrees to what we calculated by hand, which was 120 degrees. And there we go update the diagram. Ah, beautiful inclined plane. A little hard to see in the isometric view. Let's look at a side view. There it is. And you have to imagine the inclined plane just like you imagine the spring. And now let's set this to the static equilibrium value that we calculated by hand, which was I believe 13.75 centimeters. And this will give us confidence that we know what we're doing when we go to run this does nothing precisely what it should do okay and one final run we'll just uh, stretch that mass down the inclined plane by a centimeter go into our state targets a couple centimeters that'll be more exciting update the diagram we see it stretch we're holding it with our hand let it go by running the simulation, running the model, and there it goes, vibrating away like mad. So that's it. Um, just to recap what we did, you know, we took our vibrating mass on a horizontal plane, turned it into a hanging mass and an inclined plane example simply by changing one quantity in the rigid transform block, changing the angle of that prismatic joint. Simple stuff. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.